Hello and welcome to a brand new series of Study Abroad Insights series for New Zealand. I am your host Amit Chaturvedi from IDP Education. As you know, IDP are the world leaders in international education and the proud co-owner of IELTS. Today we have invited some experts from New Zealand Education who will talk at length about education and other opportunities in New Zealand. Keep looking for this space for more information. Thank you. Hello and welcome to IDP's Study Abroad Insights series. I am your host Amit Chaturvedi and today we have with us Tanya Clark from University of Waikato. Welcome to our studio Tanya. It's a pleasure to be here. Tanya is the Digital Manager for South Asia with University of Waikato. Of course we all know University is a highly ranked institution based out of Hamilton in New Zealand and they also have a campus in Tauranga. Thank you very much for joining us and we hope that this discussion will be very useful for our audiences. So I'll start asking you if you can explain to us What's your role? Um, so my role is primarily to represent the university and to provide students with, uh, to the best of my abilities, um, an understanding of the kind of experience that they'll have when they come to New Zealand and when they come to Hamilton and study at Waikato University. And I assume you're coming to India for many, many years. So what are the top three reasons uh, you think Indian students are study, interested to study uh, in New Zealand? Um, I suppose uh, New Zealand is a very up and coming new country. Um, we have a lot of um, new industries there that are growing and we need um, a, a lot of skilled people to come over and um, study programs um, in our um, universities in New Zealand and then hopefully stay and work in New Zealand for a, for a few years as a, as a skilled um, professional. So I think that um, that is one of the reasons. Um, we have a beautiful lifestyle in New Zealand. Um, there's a lot to see and do, um, a lot of outdoor activities, a lot of walks, a lot of waterfalls and beautiful um, beaches. So I think a lot of students come to experience the, the lifestyle. Um, and a lot of students just want to have an adventure as well. And I think New Zealand is a great place to come and, um, and have an adventure. So not just education, but there's a lot to look at and explore. Oh, and education as well, right, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. And uh, of course, university is based in Hamilton. Correct. And yeah. generally we hear that Auckland is possibly the most sought after destination for students heading to New Zealand. So how would you compare Auckland or uh, to a Hamilton or to some other places in uh, New Zealand? Um, well, I mean, Auckland, yeah, as you said, it is the traditional destination for people to go and it is a very large city. Um, I think by comparison, Hamilton is smaller. Um, it is much more laid back. It's a very easy lifestyle. We don't have a lot of traffic in Hamilton. It's very easy to to walk around the city. Um, it's not a it's not a really large city to walk around. Um, we don't. It, you know, the cost of living is is very very reasonable if you compare it with Auckland because we do have quite a lot of rental accommodation available in Hamilton. So, I think um, the ease of the life style I think as a student they would find that it is quiet and peaceful and they can um, concentrate on studies but at the same time have a good uh, you know the weekends would be fill up, filled with you know we have lots of cafes and restaurants in Hamilton and um, plenty of things to do on the weekends as well. And I think it's one of the most greenest and uh, a very peaceful place it in is, uh, New yeah. Zealand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have a river that runs through Hamilton, um, so you can go down and um, sit on the banks of the river. We also have a beautiful lake in Hamilton as well, and we also have the um, internationally um, renowned Hamilton Gardens in Hamilton as well. So it is very green and lush. Um, yeah, so it's uh, yeah, lovely, lots of fresh air. As I understand, there are a lot of uh, programs which a university offers. So which are your most uh, sought after programs, especially in this part of the world? 
Um, our most popular program would be the Masters of Business and Management. Um, that's been running for a, quite a few years now. It's a 12 month intensive business program offered by, as you said, the Triple Crown Accredited Business School. Um, so it is a very highly regarded program as well. Um, we also have a Masters of Information Technology, um, which is also a very popular program for students from India, um, because there's a lot of students here who have a computer science background and are looking to, um, you know, in. Uh, enhance their skills in that area. Um, we also have a new program called the Masters of Applied Finance, which we hope is going to be very popular. Uh, that will be starting then the first intake in February of next year. Um, so um, we, we do have also some engineering programs which are quite popular. The Master of Engineering Practice is also a popular program. Um, but we are a comprehensive university, so students generally come and do a range of different um, uh, programs at Waikato. So tell me something, Tanya, in your conversations, what are the common concerns and questions which generally are asked by students and their parents? Students generally want to know the details of the programs. They want to know the kind of papers they'll study and the content of the course. Um, some of the other things that they ask is about part-time work and whether they will be able to work while they're in New Zealand, which they can on a student visa. Um, so, and many of our international students do work part-time and it's a great way for them to um, learn a little bit more about um, New Zealand and become a bit more immersed in the, in the environment. Um, parents always ask about safety. Uh, they want to know if their, their children will be safe um, and of course they will because uh, New Zealand is a very safe country um, and it is quite easy to, um, to move about in, in New Zealand society and, and to be safe and, and comfortable. So, um, so it is a very safe environment. Um, so those are the main things that students and parents ask about. And generally when a student is uh, kind of interested to consider making an application, uh, what documents and what goes into making a good application and what is that you consider while evaluating an application before you make an offer? Yeah, um, we usually ask to see obviously things uh, depending on which qualification they're going into. Um, so if they're going into a postgraduate level co qualification, for example, um, then we would need to see their bachelor degree certificate. If, if they've graduated, um, we'd need to see individual semester mark sheets. Um, if they've done an English test, we would like to see that as well. Um, for some qualifications, we usually like to see a statement of purpose that talks about why they want to do the program. Um, there are some qualifications like, uh, for example, we have a qualification called the Master of Design where we like to see a portfolio of some of the work that the student might have done. Um, so some, you know, graphic design work or animation work that a student might have um, completed. So it really depends on the qualification um, that the student is applying for. You spoke about the uh, importance of statement of purpose. Hmm. So is it uh, an integral part of an application or it is like for some programs it is required? And what kind of value you assign to this document? Um, there are not all qualifications require a statement of purpose because some qualifications um, at the end of the day, we are just trying to ascertain whether a student will be able to complete a course successfully and because we want to make sure that all students have a successful experience because that's really the key to them having a good experience in New Zealand. Um, some programs we need a statement ex of purpose. For example, a Master of Education, we like to see a statement of purpose um, so that we can understand why a student is doing that qualification and we can make sure that it is the right qualification for them. Um, there are other programs like, for example, the Masters of Business and Management. We don't usually ask for a statement of purpose because um, most students have a fairly good understanding of what the program is about. 
and really just their academic um, achievements are sufficient for us to be able to ascertain whether they'll be successful in that program. And uh, considering that students have to make an application, what will be the right time for a student to kind of prepare to make an application at the same time? Do you have multiple intakes? Yes, yeah, so for some of our programs, yes, we have multiple intakes. So the Master of Business and Management, we have three intakes. We have one in February, July and November. So um, it's very flexible for students. Um, other programs such as uh, the uh, Master of um, uh, Engineering Practice or the Graduate Diploma of Teaching. We have one intake at the beginning of the year. Um, so students really need to make sure that they're getting their application together um, maybe a few months before the program starts so that they can um, have sufficient time to have their application processed and assessed by us. Um, and they have to go through the student visa process, um, which can take a, a little while. Um, so they just need to make sure that they plan um, and, uh, and get everything organised so that they have enough time to start um, when the lectures start and even earlier and hopefully when orientation program starts because that's it is a really important part of their experience that's when we help students to um, adjust to New Zealand and give them all the information that they need so we want students to, to be able to start um, you know in, in time for orientation and there's already uh, you know uh, kind of uh a question amongst in the minds of students and they always need to know that how much time will it take for them to get a response from the institution when they make an application so how does it work um, for some programs it takes longer than others um, the MBM for example we process applications centrally so those applications generally don't take too long we can um, process them from a week to one week to two weeks. Um, there are some programs where we send applications to faculty staff because the admission requirements are a little bit more complicated. Um, so for those programs, it can take anywhere up to maybe four weeks depending on um, the student's application as well. If, if their qualifications maybe are not quite straightforward, it can take a little bit longer. If they've applied for credit, that can take a little bit longer as well. So it depends on the qualification. So I usually give a general guideline of between two to four weeks for an application to be processed. So some bit of patience is required after making a application. A bit of patience, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, talking about the kind of programs which we have seen in this market, of course, there are a larger number of students who go for postgraduate programs. Uh, what's the typical duration for a postgraduate and an undergraduate program at your institution or at large in New Zealand? Um, generally, New Zealand um, bachelor degrees take uh, three years. Um, engineering qualifications or some other professional qualifications may take four years. Um, at postgraduate level, most master's level qualifications um, are between one year and one and a half years. What's an average tuition fee for an undergraduate and a postgraduate program? Um, de again, depending on the qualifications, um, some qualifications are a little more expensive than others, mainly because they have things like equipment that may need to be used in laboratories and that sort of thing, which does cost a bit more money. Um, so you're looking at anywhere between about 27, 28,000 New Zealand dollars per year, um, up to about 35 New Zealand dollars per year for an under graduate program. Um, for a postgraduate program it can take uh, for one year, may take maybe somewhere between around 30 to 35 New Zealand, a uh, thousand New Zealand dollars um, for one year and for one and a half years um, you know anywhere between about 45 to 50 thousand New Zealand dollars. And how about uh, a typical living cost in New Zealand? And how would you compare 
living in a city like Auckland to living in Hamilton? Um, so I usually suggest that students budget anywhere between about fifteen to eighteen thousand New Zealand dollars. It can depend on the student. You know, some students are very frugal and find it easy to live um, within about fifteen thousand dollars a year, um, whereas other students need a little bit more. Um, I think that probably compared with Auckland rental accommodation is a little bit less expensive in Hamilton um, so I would still suggest um, that students budget around 18,000 New Zealand dollars for living in Hamilton. For the benefit of our audience if you can possibly substantiate a little more an overall living experience the travel the food and everything else which for a first-time traveler are very critical Mm -hmm. So, if you can throw some more light, some more information around it. Well, I guess um, maybe if I take as a an example an, an MBM student, um, that program is a cohort style. So, students come in and they join a group of students who they'll be studying with for their entire qualification for the duration of that 12 months they will be with the same group of students so it is quite a social experience so when they first come um, if they've organized on-campus accommodation then then we'll pick them up from the airport and take them straight directly into their accommodation if they're staying somewhere off campus then we'll usually help them organise some temporary accommodation and then when they get to um, to Hamilton they will need to organise their own um, off campus accommodation. Um, if they've come in time for the orientation which we really hope they are um, then we will usually, that's a, that is a time when um, we'll, they will have opportunities to meet other students, there'll be information sessions, there'll be social activities for them, um, there'll be a lot of um, activities on campus. Uh, there's a cultural day every Wednesday on campus at the university, so there will be a lot of opportunities for them to um, have those experiences and to um, become immersed in the, the social atmosphere on campus. Um, and then they'll start their program where they will be working from Monday to Thursday, nine until four every day. So it is quite an intensive program. And over the weekend, a lot of students um, take the opportunity to maybe do a road trip or go and um, go to the beach or go and climb a mountain nearby and take some photos. and put it on Facebook and, and uh, make sure that they, their friends at home can see what they're doing. So that's probably a fairly typical experience for a, for a student coming to New Zealand. Okay, so let me ask you because we are in a kind of cost conscious market and we all understand education internationally is a bit expensive and uh, a key question which comes to mind of students are about scholarships. So if you can talk a little more about the scholarships given by New Zealand based institutions or scholarships which are given by uh, some bodies like education in New Zealand and kind of other uh, organizations. Sure. So um, Waikato University has our own uh, little suite of scholarships. They're both um, program based scholarships. Um, we have a new uh, campus in Tauranga um, and we're offering some bursaries for students who have offers to the Tauranga campus. We also have an International Excellence Scholarship because we uh, would like to attract some um, high performing students to the university and we'd like them to be our ambassadors as well. So the International Excellence Scholarship is about that sort of um, attracting those sort of students to New Zealand. Um, the New Zealand Government or Education New Zealand has over the past couple of years put out some New Zealand Excellence Awards for India. So we had some undergraduate scholarships at the beginning of the year um, and um, we got two students who were awarded two of those 
scholarships and they were valued up to 10,000 New Zealand dollars. Um, but there's also some new scholarships coming out um, that are for students applying now. Um, so those scholarships are between five to 10,000 New Zealand dollars and are for students going into both undergraduate and postgraduate programs. And what's uh, the typical time when a student can apply for a scholarship? Does it go with the application or they have to wait for the offer to come and then make an application for a scholarship? Um, that can depend on the scholarship. So um, our scholarships, um, for example, the Tauranga Bursary and the Master of Engineering Practice Bursary, uh, students don't need to apply for those. They just submit an application for the qualification. And if they're successful in getting an offer letter, um, we will automatically grasp grant them that bursary. So those are both worth 10,000 New Zealand dollars um, and they'll just receive a letter from us explaining that they've been awarded a bursary um, and that they are, may be able to pay their fees um, minus the bursary. The International Excellence Scholarship on the other hand, um, students do have to apply for that. So once they've got, um, they've applied, they've received an offer for the qualification, then they submitted application for the scholarship um, and there are some deadlines so all of the students who have applied their applications will all be considered in the same co cohort so um, so there are different application procedures depending on the scholarship um, for the uh, the New Zealand Excellence Awards for India um, those students need to have an offer from the university and they need to submit an application through the um, the New Zealand scholarship website. So students just need to make sure that if they are intending to apply for a scholarship that they have a look at the application procedure. It's usually available on the, the university or the um, study in New Zealand website um, and then they can um, go through the process as, as per the, um, the scholarship process as it's laid out on the website. Right. You spoke about Toranga. So Toranga is your new campus or That's how far right. is it from uh, your existing campus in Hamilton? So Camel Hamilton is our main campus and we've had that for many years. Um, the Tauranga campus opened in 2019 at the beginning of this year so it's a brand new campus. It's a purpose-built facility um, right in the centre of Ta uh, Tauranga which is a, a growing city in New Zealand. Um, so it takes around about an hour to get to Tauranga from, um, from Hamilton. It's a beautiful place. Um, there's beaches nearby, a um, beautiful cosmopolitan lifestyle. You can um, have a coffee while you're sitting and watching the waves. You can go surfing, uh, swimming. Um, you can climb Mount Manganui, which is um, in the center of Tauranga. So, um, so it is a, a lovely lifestyle. And it's also uh, one of the fastest growing cities in New Zealand. So um, we have a large port in Tauranga. Um, and probably most of uh, New Zealand's imports and exports would be going through the Tauranga um, port. So it, the economy there is growing significantly. As we talked about the scholarships, of course uh, students do come into and uh, enroll for programs. They also are interested to have some bit of internships. So do you have programs with built-in internship with the or postcard program and they get to work with industry or it is credit based or they get paid or not. So how does it work with the university? Yeah, we have uh, quite a few of our programs have internships um, and the university actually does place quite a lot of emphasis into making sure that our students are work ready with some sort of work based or or industry focused um, component in the program. Um, our undergraduate programs, the Bachelor of Business includes an internship in the final year. Um, the Masters of Business and Management has a four week internship right at the end of the program. Um, we have a Master of Information Technology which has an excellent internship. Um, it's a 10 week or 800 hour internship that starts um, at the end of the program and students are actually paid for that, that internship. They get a nominal fee of around 
5,000 New Zealand dollars to do that internship. Um, that internship, we actually have um, employers come onto the campus and uh, go through interviews with our students and then they offer the internship to the top performing students. Um, so that's um, one of our um, very, very attractive programs, mainly because it has uh, such an industry focus um, of the program. So, um, so yes, we, we do have quite a few programs. We also have a program which is called the Employability Plus program, which is offered by the um, employment um, office um, on the university or the career centre at the university. So um, that's where students are offered the opportunity to either do voluntary work or an internship or work placement um, as uh, they can come in and volunteer to do that. Um, and it is, um, it's uh, separate from their academic program. Right. Uh, I believe you also have a very popular program in Applied Finance. So That's if you can right, tell us yeah. a little more about the program and its scope, especially considering this market uh, in uh, South Asia. Yeah, so that's actually a brand new program that we've introduced um, just just very, very recently. Our first intake will be February of next year. So it is a very exciting new program. It's 12 months um, and it is for people who want to become um, uh, trained in how to work with the stock market, uh, manage portfolios. Um, we have a laboratory that will be opening in 2020 where students, um, we actually get real-time data from um, stock markets around the world and students can um, do financial modelling. Um, so it is um, an excellent program for people who want to be part of that, that exciting industry. Talking about these internships and some jobs which we were discussing earlier, uh, what's the kind of support university extends to students? Do you have job shops? Do you organise job fairs? Do you also have uh, kind of campus placements like we have in this part of the world? So how does it work for students, especially the international students who, as you earlier mentioned, have a opportunity to work and post-study work conveniences given by the sure. government? The kind of job market is very different. Um, so generally, companies won't really come onto campus and recruit large numbers of students because they don't really have that sort of capacity. So the university has, as I said, we have a careers office. Um, they offer support information sessions, workshops for students to help them understand how to look for a job, uh, the kind of um, application or the kind of things that employers want to see on a resume. So they will offer that sort of support. As I said, they also have the Employability Plus program where um, they offer support for students to help them gain some industry experience. Um, but most employers will advertise positions online. So we have websites such as seek.co.nz uh, where jobs are advertised. Um, and um, if you want to look for a job in New Zealand, you usually have to go through a competitive application process, submit an application and a resume. Um, if you're shortlisted, you'll be invited to an interview. Um, and so students, um, employers will look for a lot of different skills. They'll look for, for uh, academic ability, but also communication skills, presentation skills. They're really very interested in looking for uh, uh, someone who is very well-rounded and has a lot of different attributes. I've also heard about uh, students having uh part-time work opportunity as they pursue their degree programs. So how easy it is for students to secure a part-time work? Or does it really work in their subject area? Are they able to find work in that area? Um, it depends on their subject area. So I've talked to a lot of students who have uh, secured part-time work, but it's been in a range of different areas. Um, so for example, I spoke to a student who um, was doing the Master of Cyber Security and he had programming skills and he was working um, part-time um, as a coder for a company in Hamilton. Um, so Hamilton has a reasonable size IT industry and there's work for people who can, uh, who have programming languages and, um, and can, you know, work on things like software development. It's an excellent way to uh, 
um, develop things like communication skills, regardless of how, um, how what the kind of job what kind of job it is, it's a really good opportunity for students to, um, to understand how a New Zealand workplace is and to develop those sort of communication skills that are so valuable when it comes to looking for a job at the end of their program. Yeah, that was my next question because people who do internships or people who have these part-time work opportunities, how easy it is for them as they complete the program to get a full-time job? Um, again, it depends on the qualification. Um, I found that students who are doing things like IT, um, they find that uh, the work of the work there is work available, and they don't find it terribly difficult to get work. Engineering, um, these things are all on the long-term skill shortages list. So um, they're areas where New Zealand does have a shortage of skilled labour. Um, so students who are qualified in those areas generally find there are a lot of opportunities available. Um, there's also um, a lot of opportunities for students such as students who complete the MBM program and they've got a range of different skills because that's part of what the MBM will offer to students so they can um, apply for jobs in a range of different areas because they'll get some skills in marketing or logistics or strategic management. Um, it does mean the scope and the opportunities are there um, which they wouldn't have if they didn't have those sort of skills. So let's talk about something which is uh, critical for first time travellers, young students. Uh, do you offer any kind of uh, counselling support as students come into the campus for the first time? How does it work for students who are new to the place, new to the country, new to the city? Uh, what support do you extend? Um, so the university does have an international student services office um, and they are there for international students so they provide, depending on what is necessary for students. If, if students are just having a hard time settling in and they need someone to talk to, then there are certainly people there who are available for them. If they have some more serious issues, there are trained uh, counsellors on campus. There's also a medical centre on campus, so students can um, see the doctor when they're on campus. There are nurses on campus as well. So all of those, um, those facilities are there. Um, the International Student Services office, office also provides assistance with uh, visas, um, with if they want to apply for a, a post-study work visa, they can give them some guidance on how to do that. Um, they provide assistance um, such as looking for accommodation, um, so uh, they also organise social activities for students that run in orientation but also throughout the year. Um, so they do provide quite a lot of um, buffering for students, some, a lot of opportunities so that students can come in and develop the sort of social networks that they need to develop in order to, um, to have uh, that, uh, you know, back up when, you know, if they're not, uh, if they're getting homesick or they're missing family, it's always really good to have friends around when you're in that situation. So they provide a lot of, um, a lot of opportunities for students to make those sort of friends so that they do get get through those, um, those difficult periods uh, much more easily. And I also believe because you attract students from around the world, uh, people who come from different nationalities, uh, do they also have platforms where they kind of come together and celebrate festivals, get together? So does university facilitate that or they do it on their own? Um, so the students have every Wednesday there is a cultural hour and that um, runs from 12 to 1 every Wednesday. Um, so there's a lot of um, events and activities that go on during that time. Um, students will often do, uh, there, there might be um, a, some dancing or a music group will come in and perform. Um, but that goes on every Wednesday. Um, the university also does have, um, for 
example, during Holi, there is a, a colour festival that we have at the university. So students are all invited to come and participate in that and that's on the university campus. Um, the university also has um, just recently a Waikato Indian Students um, Club has just recently formed. So that's a student driven club um, and they're very active on Facebook and they organise social activities um, and they're very open to new members coming um, and joining them. So, um, so the university does have these student clubs that receive funding from the university and are able to set up and um, run and invite students to, to come and, and join them in their activities. Accommodation is very important for international students. So when a student is arriving, are they assured of an accommodation on campus or they have to take support from institution and find something outside? How does it work for students and how easy it is? Um, so the university does have its own accommodation and we have quite a bit of uh, different types of accommodation. There's uh, self-catered, catered facilities. We have dormitory style accommodation as well as um, units and townhouses and colleges. Um, students do need to apply for the accommodation. Um, it's not guaranteed and we do sometimes run out um, shortly before semester starts so I always try to encourage students to make sure they apply for accommodation early so that they can be assured um, because especially for younger students it's always um, so much more um, uh, it provides assurances for parents if their students if their um, younger you know children can live on campus um, so if there is no accommodation on campus, um, there is also um, off-campus accommodation. The students, um, there are websites like uh, realestate.co.nz um, um, and trademe.co.nz where um, students can look for accommodation on those websites. And most students don't usually have too much trouble looking for off-campus accommodation. We also have homestay accommodation so the university vets families um, and so those they will often have um, accommodation available as well that we can organise for students if they want to stay with a family at the university. And of course there is an integral part for students to have uh, extracurricular activities, sports. So does the university encourage students to engage in sports activities or you have uh, facilities yeah. in place? How does it work? Um, it's hard to come to New Zealand and not be involved in some sort of sports. Um, New, Kiwis love sports and, and it's just an integral part of their lives. You know, there's cricket clubs, there's rugby clubs, there's a huge number of different sporting clubs that are associated with the university and they're all very active clubs. Um, there's a gymnasium on campus called Unirec. Um, there are badminton courts, squash courts. Um, there is uh, volleyball, netball tournaments um, and courts there. There are classes that are run there. There's weight rooms, etc. Um, so there is, um, and there is also discounted prices for university students. And the, the cost is very, very reasonable for students to join, uh, to jo join uni rec so um, so there is plenty of sporting and and those sort of activities and um, clubs on the university campus uh, tell us something uh, Tanya you spoke about uh, doctors being on campus and nurses being on campus do students uh, who are traveling from destinations like India or otherwise apart from uh, India other parts of the world do they need uh, insurance health insurance especially to yeah. come into New Zealand. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, when they accept an offer to the university, um, they would actually need to purchase some health insurance. Um, so we organise that for them. We give them a quote for that when um, when we make them an offer of qualification. Um, we'll quote them the tuition fees as well as the, um, the health insurance coverage. So that's actually compulsory for all students who come to New Zealand few things which you think are very critical as top three or five tips for students who are aspiring to study abroad mm -hmm. or the choice of destination is New Zealand. 
Um, so I guess my top tips would probably be to do your research and um, research the university or the institution that you're considering coming to. Um, make sure that you know as much as you can about them, about their rankings, about their, um, their accreditation, about their um, recognition um, and also do your research into the kind of city that you're coming to and make sure that it is uh, it is the kind of place that you will uh, that you'll settle into easily. Um, I think that's probably my top tip for most students is to just make sure that you do your homework and um, you you do so most most institutions and universities will have a lot of information on their website about the university. The New Zealand government has plenty of information. Um, study in New Zealand website has plenty of information about all the different cities um, in New Zealand and about the countries and about the lifestyle. So they've got a lot of practical tips on there that students should um, would really benefit from having a look at. So I think definitely the information is there um, and students do have the opportunity to research um, the destination and the institution before they choose where they're going to study. And for the benefit of students, uh, we all understand destinations internationally are quite strange in a way. Mm. But is New Zealand welcoming to students? I think so. I think Kiwis are very, very welcoming with international students. They're very relaxed and easy going um, and also it's a multicultural country so um, they're not really a stranger to having um, you know students of different nationalities and come, come and study next to them so um, yes I think um, New Zealanders generally are very welcoming, welcoming for international students and for people from overseas. Thank you very much for this discussion today That's and I'm sure uh, this was welcome. very informative for our audiences. Thank you all for joining us today. We hope you found this discussion useful. We invite you to visit our offices across country. For more information, do log into our website www.idp.com and we also invite you to join our social media handles. Thank you very much for watching us. Thank you.